be judged against. And like wind turbines in an autumn storm, Ed Miliband and David Cameron thrashed around the problem of high energy bills for a fourth noisy week in a row. Can the Prime Minister tell us what's the difference between his policy on energy and that of the energy companies? David Cameron, though, had some political dynamite. He accused Ed Miliband himself of comparing the market. At the dispatch box, he said, I'll tell the Prime Minister what is a con, telling people that the answer is to switch their suppliers. But what did we find out over the last few days? He switched his supplier. Yes! He, he, went, he went from one of these insurgent companies to cut his bills. Isn't it typical? He comes here every week and attacks Tory policy. He goes home and he adopts Tory policy to help his own family. Ed Miliband pulled a quizzical face. The only thing people need to do if they want somebody to stand up against the energy companies, they need to switch the Prime Minister. Now, Ed Miliband reckons his idea of promising an energy price freeze chimes with everyone starting to turn the heating on in the evenings. So with some relish, he tried to lump the Prime Minister in with the energy companies. As the unofficial spokesman for the energy companies, maybe he can answer the question that they couldn't answer yesterday. Can he explain, can he explain why when wholesale prices have hardly moved since a year ago, retail prices are rising by around 10%? David Cameron seemed to have got hold of Ed Miliband's dual fuel details. Let's listen to the people providing his energy. They said this, a policy like this is potentially problematic for an independent provider. Bluntly, bluntly, it could put me under. So that is his policy, not listening to the people providing his energy, but having less choice, less competition, higher prices. Ed Miliband grasped that with both hands. I'll explain something quite simple to him. You see, most energy companies don't want a price freeze, right? And most consumers do. Right, that's why the energy companies are against the price freeze. I mean, he's so on the side of the energy companies, Mr Speaker, we should call them the Big Seven, the Prime Minister and the Big Six energy companies. And as for competition... Here's the problem. He wants a review. He wants a review on energy policy, but that's exactly what the energy companies want. A long inquiry, kicking the problem into the long grass. How will a review the reports next summer help people to pay their bills this winter? We want a competition inquiry that starts straight away. That is our policy. And it's supposed to report by early spring. Ed Miliband insisted there was no need to wait for that. Instead of having a review, he's got an opportunity to do something for the public next week. He's got an energy bill going through Parliament. Instead of sitting on his hands, he could amend that bill to institute a price freeze now. We'll support a price freeze. Why doesn't he act? Because it's not a price freeze, it's a price con. And the fact is, he is hiding behind this economically illiterate policy because he can't talk about the economy because it's growing. He can't talk about unemployment because it's falling. He can't talk about the deficit because it's come down. He's got nothing else to say. He's just a weak leader with no ideas. Whatever you think about the exchanges so far, I'm afraid it all went a bit playground after that as the two men traded insults and Labour MPs kept up a chant of weak, weak at David Cameron. I'll tell you who's weak. Is this Prime Minister too weak to stand up to the energy companies? Nothing, nothing less than a price freeze will do. Sticks and stones came flying back the other way. I tell you what is weak. Too weak to stand up and admit their economic failures. Too weak to stand up to Len McCluskey, who tried to wreck Scotland's petrochemical industry. And too weak to stand up to the Shadow Chancellor on H2. The Prime Minister's final flourish on HS2 being rather punctured there by the Speaker, who interrupted to shush a Labour MP. And, speaking of shouting out, not a great day for the Prime Minister's parliamentary aide, Gavin Williamson, who'd been loyally bellowing away at Ed Miliband. Just in case he thought his career was going well, the Speaker interrupted with the ultimate workplace put-down. His role is to nod his head in the appropriate places and to fetch and carry notes. No, no, 